Welcome to Autos and today we are learning smart objects in Photoshop. This watermelon is a smart object and this a raster image. I'll go and select both of them and then scale them down. I'll hit enter to accept the change. And during the scaling down process, some of the pixels were lost. I'm going to go and select both of them again and then scale them back up. Last, I'll hit enter to accept the change. You can see that the raster image is not able to reproduce the lost pixels properly and that's why it's blurry and pixelated. On the other hand, the smart object could reproduce all the lost pixels and that's why it's crisp and sharp. But how do I know that this is a smart object and this is a raster? This we know from the layers. This is the watermelon on the left and see how it has an icon on it. That's how we know it's a smart object, whereas the raster has no such icon. Now how do we convert a raster layer into a smart object? We right click on the layer and then convert to smart object. Now it too bears the smart object icon. So let's see what changes it has brought to this watermelon. I'm going to select both of them like before, scale them down, select them once more. You can see that this watermelon is no longer pixelated. But how do we convert from a smart object to a raster image? We right click on the smart object layer and then click on rasterize layer. You see how the smart object symbol is gone? I'll rasterize this layer as well. And now I'll test them out. I'll select both the watermelons, scale them down and then back up. You can see that how both of them are now pixelated because both the images are now raster images. Now there are several other convenient ways to create smart objects. The first method is the one we have already learned. We drag any image from our hard drive and place it into Photoshop. Right click on the image layer and then convert to smart object. But it would be very tedious to do this each and every time. To avoid this, we go to Edit, Preferences, then General. All we have to do is check Always Create Smart Objects when placing. Now I'm going to drag this image from my hard drive and this is automatically a smart object. There's another way how you can create smart objects. Go to File and then Place Embedded. Select the image you want and then click on Place. And there you go. It's a smart object. But what if we want to create a smart object out of a full Photoshop document, like the one we have here? I'm going to double click on it and show you what it has. It has got two layers, one with the ellipse shape layer and the other contains the unicorn. I'm going to close this, open the other Photoshop document, go to File, Place Embedded. We locate the Photoshop document and then place it. See how it has turned into a smart object as well. Now we will try to edit a smart object. So let's place one. I'll go to File, Place Embedded. I'm going to select this image file. This is a smart object, no doubt. But what if we want to place some yellow paint on this red wrapper? As I try to paint with the brush tool, I'm confronted with this stop sign. But still, I'll try to paint. And it gives us a warning message that we cannot paint unless we rasterize the smart object. We don't want to do that, so cancel. Instead, I'm going to go and double click on the smart object thumbnail. It opens in a new document. It's worth noting here that it's not a .psd Photoshop document, but a PNG document. Why is it PNG document? Because the source image was a PNG file. So anyway, let's try painting on the wrapper. And we can paint without any trouble. It is now crucial that we save this PNG document. We do that by hitting Ctrl S. We are all done here, so I'll close the document. And you can see the change reflects in the main document. Now let's try to edit a smart object made out of a Photoshop file. I'll go to File, Place Embedded, and here's the Photoshop file. It is placed as a smart object as well and we cannot paint on it with the brush tool. So like before, I'll double click inside the smart object thumbnail and it opens as a separate PSD document. Why PSD? Because the source file was a PSD file. Here I can easily create a new layer and then paint with the brush tool. 
It's essential that we save this document for the changes to reflect on this document. So I'll do that with Control S. Close this one. And there you go. Next, we'll see how to edit a smart object created out of an Adobe Illustrator document. So like before, we go to File. Place Embedded. And here's the Illustrator document. The dialog box asks if you want to open this as a smart object. We do. To edit this, we'll double click inside the thumbnail. And quite surprisingly, it opens inside Adobe Illustrator and not Photoshop. Here you can do anything you wish, but I'll just add a small rectangle. I'll then save it with Ctrl S. Close Adobe Illustrator. And you can see how the smart object has updated itself inside Photoshop. There's another way how you can create smart objects from Adobe Illustrator. So this is an Illustrator file. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna click and copy this bear. Open Photoshop. Then paste the bear with Ctrl V. The dialog box asks how we want to paste it. We want to paste it as a smart object which is already selected. And there you go. If we want to edit this, we simply have to double click inside the thumbnail which takes us inside Adobe Illustrator. Here we can make the necessary changes. I'll just add a rectangle like before. Save it and then open Photoshop and it has updated. Next we'll see how to create copies of smart objects. This chicken is a smart object. Suppose I want a copy of this over here. We'll select the smart object layer and simply press Ctrl J. The duplicate is on top here so I'll move it to the right. But suppose I want this duplicate smart object to be a little bit different. I'll double click inside the duplicate thumbnail. And just for the sake of it, I'll just put a dot. Save the document. And then close it. Now watch what has happened in the main document. Not only has it updated the duplicate smart object, it has also updated the original smart object. Now in some cases this will be useful, but we don't want this now. So how do we go around this? Let's start with a fresh document. This time I'll go and right click on the smart object. And then new smart object via copy. Let's move the copy to the side. Let's edit this duplicate, so double click inside the thumbnail. I'll just put a dot with the brush tool. Save the document and then close it. You can see how in the main document only the duplicate has been updated. In this example, I'll show you one of the most important uses of smart objects. We have a placeholder billboard here and I want to insert this image inside it. And this is a raster image. So first I'll scale it down so that we can fit it inside the billboard. Hit Ctrl T, right click on the image, go to distort and then drag the corners to match the perspective. Then I'll hit enter to accept the change. But suppose now you've decided that you need a different image placed over here. It means that you'll have to do the scaling and the distortion process all over again. It's tedious, we don't want to do that. What we will do is turn this image into a smart object first. We click on Convert to Smart Object. Now we will scale it down like before. Ctrl plus T. Right click and distort it. Suppose we want this image to be inside the billboard. All we need to do is double click inside the Smart Object thumbnail. It opens as a new document. Now all we need to do is drag the image from the hard drive into Photoshop. You can delete the old image if you want, but I'll keep it. It doesn't matter. Now we just have to save this document. So Ctrl plus S. Once that's done, I'll close it. And you can see how the smart object has updated inside the billboard. Next reason why we should use smart objects. We have a small dragon image here. It's a raster layer and I want to add some filter effects to it. So I go to filter. I'll randomly choose anything. Blur maybe. Let's use motion blur. I'll increase the blurring bit more. And then OK it. 
But suppose now I think it's too much. I want to adjust and reduce the blurring effect. But seems like we are not left with any options to do that. The effect is slapped onto this raster image. So the only way we can go about it is undoing it. This brings us to the use of smart object. This time before applying the filter, I'll convert this dragon image into a smart object. Then I'll go to filter, blur, motion blur. Increase the blurring effect. And you can see how the filter is now a separate entity. Instead of deleting it, if you don't want it, you can just turn it invisible. Or if you want to adjust the filter furthermore, you can double click on it. And just do that. We can also use smart objects as group. This image is composed of this solid color adjustment. A simple raster image for the left, a raster image which has got a layer style, a smart object, and a saturation adjustment layer. We could have also had a shape layer, text layer, whatnot. But for the sake of this example, we'll be using only these elements. Now, assume you want these three objects into a group. I'll select all of them, including the adjustment layer. Right click and then convert to smart object. So you can see that all the four layers have been truncated into this single smart object layer. And anytime we want to edit the elements inside, we just double click inside the smart object thumbnail. It opens into a new document and there we have all the four layers as it is. Here you can add a new adjustment layer, shape layer, draw, whatever you want. For the next lesson, we have three documents open side by side inside Photoshop. I'm on this document now and first I want to embed an image here as smart object. So we go to file, place embedded and here's the image we want to place. Let's move the crown up and then hit enter. So as expected, the crown image is a smart object. I want to place the same crown on these other two documents. So I'll make sure that the smart object is selected. Then I'll copy it with Ctrl plus C. I'll go to the next document. And then paste the crown with Ctrl plus V. Let's position it properly. Now let's go to the third document. And paste the crown again with Ctrl plus V. Last we move the crown to the top. Suppose I want to make some changes in the crown. So I'll go ahead and select any of these three crowns randomly. Let's go with this one. And as you might have guessed, I'll have to go and double click inside the smart object thumbnail to edit the crown. And as expected, the smart object opens in a new document. And this document is a PNG file since the source document was also a PNG image. I'll select the eraser tool with shortcut E. And then erase this section from the crown. Last, we'll have to save this document for the change to reflect outside. And we want this change to reflect on all these three separate documents. So I'll save this document with Ctrl S. And you can see that it has only affected the document in which the smart object was edited. Also, it's worth mentioning here that the source image has experienced no change after the process. So it is the same as before. But the question is, how do we make Photoshop update all these three crowns in the three separate documents at the same time? For that, we'll have to use a special form of smart object. We'll start afresh, go to File, and instead of Place Embedded, this time we use Place Linked. It has got all the properties of a smart object. We'll select the crown again, place it on top, and then hit Enter. You know this is a linked object by this link symbol. Now like before, I'm going to place this crown on the other two documents. So I'll make sure this linked object is selected. Copy it with Ctrl plus C. Let's go to the second document. Here I'll paste it with Ctrl plus V. Let's reposition the crown. Now we'll go to the third document. Paste the crown here as well and move it up. You can edit any of these three crowns, but like before, I'll go with this one. Like a smart object, to edit a linked object, we'll have to double click on the thumbnail as well. The linked object opens in a new document. 
I'm going to grab the eraser tool with E and then erase this small portion. I'm going to save this document after which I expect the change to reflect on all these three separate documents. So Ctrl plus S. And voila, not only have these three crowns been updated, but you can see that the change has been made in the source image as well. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.